Jesus Christ, this happens every single time a modern Sonic game is about to come out. I just, I have no idea what the hell to expect. The fact that this blue hedgehog occupies so much of my brain space is probably unhealthy, but Sega, they just know. They know that I'll always cave into this stupid, gigantic nostalgia bias that I have for the guy. I think it's no secret that when it comes to modern Sonic, his career is, well, built on a foundation of some solid wooden planks, held up together by the most nimble pieces of straw on the planet. And there's probably some mold in there somewhere as well, not gonna lie. Let's see, the last modern Sonic game was... Uh, okay, that's a spin-off, that barely counts. It's not a Sonic Team game, guys. The last Sonic Team game was... Well, okay, that's a bit better. Not there enough, though? You know what? Screw those games. This game is a boost formula game. I love those games. You love those games. Let's stay optimistic. So in order to celebrate the release date of Forces, let's have a fun exercise and compare each of the Sonic Boost Formula games, and see which one of them speeds to the top. Before we begin, let's lay down some criteria. Boom! Criteria. In your face. You got all that? 8 Chaos Emeralds, 8 Criteria. I'm going with the amount of Emeralds in Sonic the Fighters, fuck you, fight me. Oh, and there will also be some diet spoilers for the stories, mainly regarding some of the endings, so there's that too. Alright, let's make like Sonic and boost our way into the comparison. While I will concede that Sonic has never been about the story, I definitely have a hard time refuting that claim when so much of modern Sonic has such a large focus on storytelling elements. Hell, two of the modern Sonic spin-off platformers literally take place in this meta universe called the Storybook series. Sonic Unleashed is no exception to this, though its plot is much more like something you'd see in a Pixar movie, rather than the more in-depth plots that Sonic Adventure 2, Shadow, and the 2006 one did. Unleashed sees Sonic getting turned into a werehog after a pretty intense bout with Dr. Eggman, which resulted in the entire world getting split into the parts after the awakening of an ancient god known as Dark Gaia. Sonic then must team up with both Tails and new trusty sidekick Chip, in order to restore the Chaos Emeralds and thus recombine the entire Earth, restoring the world back to its former glory. Pretty epic stuff, right? The actual story overall I find to be pretty entertaining, honestly. Lots of fun, quirky characters like Dan Green the Ice Cream Man. Looks good, don't it? And let's not forget our Lord and Savior. I'll happily explain everything over a plate of cucumber sandwich. He's the not to mention some genuinely heartwarming moments between Sonic and the other characters. While I could see the twist of who Chip was coming a mile away, I still think it was handled fairly decently due to it being so genuine. And I mean, the scene where Amy doesn't recognize Sonic in his werehog form, I actually felt a little sorry for the guy. And I don't think I've ever felt sorry for Sonic. Which I think is a pretty good transition for Sonic Colors. Hey, did somebody here order a clobbering? Are you sure? It says somebody ordered an extra large clobbering topped with everything. Hmm, okay. Tell you what, I can't take this thing back, so I'll give you an extra large clobbering for nothing. See, instead of feeling sorry for Sonic, I feel sorry for myself. Alright, I don't hate the corny dialogue in Sonic Colors that much. It does fit with the tone it was trying to go for. After all, the premise is easily one of the most bizarre ones a Sonic game has had. Eggman basically makes an amusement park to make up for his evil deeds in the past, but if you've actually played Sonic Colors, you'd know that the second someone would try and go to this amusement park, he or she would die on the spot. It's pretty obvious that there's an evil scheme behind this park, and we get confirmation of that from the Wisps pretty early on. Sonic Colors is very character light, in the sense that we only have Sonic, Tails, Orbot, and Cubot, as well as Yakker and of course Dr. Eggman. This game honestly has my favorite instance of Tails and Eggman in the entire series. These two were absolutely hilarious the entire way through, and I still use some of Eggman's PR lines in my actual life to this very day. Orbot and Cubot are pretty okay as well. Cubot had a decently good running gag in the form of his voice chip malfunctioning, and Orbot does an alright job being the straight man, though I do still prefer Ergo from Sonic Unleashed. 
Yeah, you can kinda tell I've delayed the elephants in the room here. This iteration of Sonic can be pretty funny at times. No copyright law in the universe is going to stop me! But other times... You know, I don't like what you're doing to my friends in there. It's messed up, so I'm gonna mess you up. I will say that I do appreciate the risk this game took in having a more Saturday morning cartoon vibe to it, and that at the very least it fits the franchise. Sonic Generations does something completely different from the other two, and has almost no story whatsoever. As I've said before, I'm alright with this because Sonic isn't about the story, but it's pretty underwhelming to say the least. The premise of the Time Eater really only exists to put classic and modern Eggman, as well as the classic Sonics together, but I still think it does the job well enough. Most of the Sonic cast returns in this game, but they only have a few one-liners here and there. They aren't really involved that much in the story, but once again they do their job well. Overall, I think I'm gonna have to go with the predictable thing and go with Sonic Unleashed on this one. Mainly because I prefer its tone to colors, and well, it just simply has more to it than Generations. If there's one thing that the Boost Trilogy shares in common though, it's that these games have stellar graphical fidelity and presentation across the board, making this one of the hardest decisions to choose from. All three games have some pretty stellar character animation which gives all of the cutscenes some much needed personality to them, and also contains some pretty snazzy menus and user interfaces, which fit the tone of each game well. Architecture of the levels is nothing short of impressive for the entire Boost trilogy, containing a ton of great level assets and art design for almost every single stage. Sonic Colors is a little gimped seeing that it's running on the Nintendo Wii, which is far less powerful than any of the systems that can run on Leashed or Generations. On the flip side, that makes it all the more impressive considering this game actually doesn't look that much worse than its contemporaries only having some lower quality textures, as well as being run in an SD resolution. Sonic Unleashed still does look a whole lot better though, running on the fantastic Hedgehog engine, which allows all these levels to have these beautiful lighting effects on top of high quality textures to boot. Granted, the art style of Sonic Unleashed also gives it a slight advantage, seeing as its levels have a much more realistic look than the other two, which naturally makes the levels feel, well, more realistic. Despite it reusing levels from past games, I'm honestly going to have to go with Generations on this one, as it has the best of both worlds, with the more Sonic-like visuals, on top of it also being rendered in the Hedgehog engine. I also like its UI the best since it fits more in line with the series than Unleashed does, and it visually is a lot more bright and crisp than the Colors UI. Now, if you want the hardest category to choose from, this one is it. In fact, I preemptively didn't include aspects such as sound effects in this category because all three games are pretty much equal in that regard. All of them have fantastic sound quality, but all of them also contain the same flaws, such as having the boost sound effect drown out the music when you're playing, which is kind of annoying but I digress. Voice acting in the games on the other hand is an entirely different story. Sonic Unleashed contains what is, in my opinion, the best performance of the four kids' voice actors. This is the game that made Griffith my favorite Sonic voice of all time, as he perfectly rides the line between sounding cocky and confident, while still sounding earnest and honest. Yo, Eggman! Thanks for that little skydiving adventure the other day. To be honest to myself, I really think that it was mostly the fault of the writing and the direction that Sonic sounded so obnoxious in colors. Roger Smith did the best he could with what he was given, and he definitely sounds a whole lot better in Sonic Generations. Tails, on the other hand, only benefited from the direction they took him with colors, sounding a lot more snarky and sarcastic, rather than just the bland sidekick character. Oh come on, I've seen you save the day a lot of times, but I've never seen you talk to a pile of metal. Which unfortunately is what he sounds like in Unleashed and Generations. Eggman is just fantastic and puts out the best performance in all three games. He's my favorite Sonic character of all time for a reason, after all. The side characters are also pretty solid across the board, though some of the Unleashed voices can get a little awkward at times. It was a little bit before the Tremors hit. This old man showed up with a... and a... and a whole pack of robots. 
But I know what you're waiting for. You want to hear me talk about the music, don't you? Sonic games are known for their music, and the Boost trilogy is no exception. Sonic Unleashed goes for a more epic and grand sounding OST to make you want to save the planet from other destruction. There's this great sense of variety in the music, since Unleashed takes place in our world, most of the OST is centered around the cultural resonance that each location gives. Instruments in each track sound like what you might hear if you went to these locations in the real world, and it makes each location feel more alive and relatable. Sonic Colors takes the exact opposite approach, and yet it still manages to work wonders. The music has this very bright and poppy aesthetic. It encourages you to explore this ridiculous and gigantic theme park and enjoy the ride while you're here. Planet Wisp is one of my favorite Sonic songs ever, being a mixture of calm and serene instruments to represent the more peaceful Wisp life, and the more metallic and funky sounding instruments to represent the already commenced takeover of the planet that Dr. Eggman is executing. Sonic Generations unfortunately has the downside of being an anniversary game that involves time travel, and thus its soundtrack is consistent of remixes from past Sonic games. While it isn't nearly as inventive as the other two, it's certainly no slouch when it comes to readapting these songs for a more modern audience. What really stands out with the soundtrack though is that it manages to not only include more popular Sonic OST remixes, but it also keeps the more obscure Sonic games in mind as well. Knuckles Chaotix, Sonic Battle, and many other Sonic games have at least one or two tracks in here, unlockable songs or otherwise. Granted, it doesn't remix all of the music that it contains, namely those unlockable tracks, but I'm still glad they at least made an effort to include almost every Sonic game in here. I'm still going to give this point overall to Sonic Colors, as while it does have a few voice acting issues here and there, its music by principle fits the persona of a Sonic game more than Unleashed does, and also by principle is more original than Sonic Generations is. It also contains my favorite orchestral remix of the main theme for the final boss, and it also contains my favorite credits theme, so there's that as well. Each of these games offers a very different brand of level design and architecture when it comes to their levels and hub worlds. Being the first 3D boost formula game, Sonic Unleashed tries its best to try out this new innovation by keeping its levels a lot more constricted in terms of movement. The design of the levels themselves are interestingly very 2D Sonic in nature, including the 3D sections. While the pathways themselves don't offer much in terms of open movement, Sonic Unleashed more than makes up for that by having a large amount of multiple routes to take. Take this section in Empire City for example. I can either choose to do the level the safest and most linear way, or I can do a large risk in order to discover the other track that takes me on a completely different section of the level. Sonic Colors on the other hand, while it isn't much different, it's very different in its own sort of ways. While there are still plenty of multiple paths you can access via platforming, much of Sonic Colors is based around accessing pathways via the Wisp powers. It also decidedly has far less sections that take place in 3D, relegating most of the platforming itself to 2D sections and leaving the 3D sections for actions like scripted drift sequences as well as sidestep sequences. Sometimes though it just simply has a short linear track to run or grind on. While this might sound a little worse on paper, I can still vouch that the 2D platforming still offers a fair bit of challenge when it wants to, and that each of the wisps is fun enough to control, and it encourages exploration of the level. Sonic Generations is a completely different beast in comparison to the other two, however. While comparisons are relatively similar to Unleashed, Sonic Generations is bold enough to spout multiple levels with very large open sections and a plethora of 3D platforming to be had. I have to say that I was a little disappointed that this game even contained 2D sections within the levels, considering that the 3D sections are so well designed and are basically what Sonic Unleashed wanted to do in the first place. Take the opening section of Seaside Hill for example. This more open-ended area gives me a plethora of pathways to work with. I could go through the center of the stage, which is the safest pathway to take, I could go through the left rainbow ring which brings me to the highest point of the stage currently, or I could go to the right rainbow ring which inevitably leads me to running on the water where I will discover a cannon that allows me to skip a large chunk of the level. Hub worlds are also considerably different in each game. Sonic Colors easily has the most minimalist hub world, offering up a simple map screen where you select which section of the theme park you want to explore. After selecting that, you then are brought to this pretty adorable miniature version of the Super Mario World level selection map. Obviously this hub world isn't anything too fancy, but at the very least it gets the job done. 
Sonic Generations handled its hub world in a much stronger fashion, but it is a bit harder to describe. I think the best way to put it is that it's a 2D version of those hub worlds that you see in 3D platformers, where you can platform as well as access specific side missions that you can do for bonuses. While I understand the reasoning behind why this hub world feels so empty, I'm still not a fan of the plain white aesthetic that we have going on here. I wish that when you finish one of the worlds, it will restore some sort of background to where the white is on top of restoring the 3D objects that are white to the aesthetic of the level, rather than just doing the latter. Sonic Unleashed, on the other hand, is basically just one of those 3D platformer hub worlds. Like Sonic Colors, you do have a world map, but instead of just transporting you to the level select, Sonic Unleashed actually has a fully fleshed out 3D hub world. Much like Sonic Generations, you can get side quests and do platforming here, but here the platform can actually obtain you some sort of secret or metal that can't be obtained in the regular levels. The unfortunate part of the Sonic Unleashed hub worlds is that you can't use Sonic's entire moveset unless you're in the level select portion of the hub world, but that was to avoid breaking the game. Wouldn't want Sonic boosting into civilians after all. I'm going to give the point to Generations on this one. It just has the more fleshed out level design on top of having the most enjoyable hub world. I should also make a quick mention that I referenced medals a few times. This is not a particularly large point against Sonic Unleashed in this category though. While I don't feel this particular brand of level design should be used for a game that has required collectibles, you don't really need a whole lot of medals to progress through the game, and most of the medals you can get from the Werehog stages or the hub worlds. I realize that gimmicks is an incredibly vague statement, so allow me to define exactly what I'm talking about. Gimmicks are basically the alternate styles of play offered within the Boost trilogy. Now you might be saying, wait a minute, Sonic Colors is a pure boost game, there's no gimmicks in here. To which I would respond that you might be correct, and you might not be correct. The thing is, you could count the Wisps as a collective alternate style of play in of themselves, but you could also make the argument that the Wisps are simply power-ups, and since they only alternate the style of play for a short amount of time, they shouldn't be compared to something like the Werehog or Classic Sonic. I don't know, the definition of Wisps from a gameplay perspective is very hard to pin down, but for the sake of keeping consistency with this list, I'm probably going to keep them as an alt. Sonic Unleashed's gimmick, of course, is the Werehog, which is probably the most intrusive one of the three, as it actually takes up more game time than regular Sonic does. I do agree with the consensus opinion that the style of play offered by the Werehog is one that really doesn't fit inside of a Sonic game, but I will give props to his levels having some fairly solid design. Minus for the fact that he has a battle theme though. Seriously, that song got super annoying. I don't really think that the combat of the Werehog is that bad though. It's your standard beat em up affair and it works, it's just nothing spectacular. Generations alt style of play is the one and only classic Sonic. Listen. I love Classic Sonic, and I do think that Generations gives him some really great stages that take advantage of his moveset here. Looking at you, Crisis City Classic. My issue with Classic Sonic is that his physics just feel a teensy bit off, which to be honest here, makes him feel just a little bit less like the Classic Sonic that he should feel like. This, at least for me, makes him feel less enjoyable to play than he should be. Having said that, this still comes down to a hard decision between the Wisps and Colors and Classic Sonic. I'm going to give the point to Generation since I enjoy the idea and he's still pretty fun to play, but know that I don't want Classic Sonic in every single game. In fact, I'd rather none of these gimmicks appear in every single modern Sonic game. They can be in them occasionally, but I would also like to see a game that's just a ton of Unleashed Sonic daytime levels with no gimmicks, like Colors, but without the Wisps. Camera in all three games is actually pretty well done. I'm going to be perfectly honest here and say that I don't really need much of a dynamic camera when it comes to the Boost trilogy. As long as the camera is centered and or fixed on Sonic, that's all I really need. I will give props to Sonic Unleashed though as it does have a controllable camera on top of having the camera fixed on Sonic already, unlike the other two which are just fixed on Sonic. Though, the reason Sonic Unleashed has that controllable camera is probably because of the Werehog, but I digress. Overall control is actually surprisingly more different than one might expect. Sonic and Unleashed felt much more noticeably stiff and awkward than he did in the other two games. The jump has this weird stickiness to it, almost like it was coated with a little too much gravity in mind. Color Sonic alleviates the stiffness by having the double jump, which allows for more possibility space and platforming in both 2D and 3D. 
Generation just straight up fixed the jump entirely by making it a lot more fluid, and the game only benefits from that. Drifting controls are pretty similar in both Unleashed and Colors, but obviously since the places you can drift in Colors are sequenced, it doesn't really give you enough time to experiment with it. Unleashed you can drift whenever you want, but the more outwards drift feels extremely loose. The best way to drift is to start from the outside as much as possible, and then go all the way in the direction you want to go in to get the best curve possible. Not boosting also helps, especially in the more drift-oriented challenges like this one here in Missouri, which can go fuck itself. Sonic Generations has an extremely tight inwards drift that works in tandem with Sonic's boost. This makes Sonic feel that much more controllable when dealing with portions of the level that encourage drifting and boosting, and makes boosting pretty much a non-issue now. Unleash Sonic also has this incredibly awkward button placement for his homing attack. Instead of being put on the same button as the jump, it's put on the same button as the air boost of all things, which is a design decision that still baffles me to this day. This round was an easy win for Sonic Generations, but I would also like to see a re-implementation of the double jump from Colors if Sonic Team has any good ideas for it. Just a heads up, for this category I will be including both classic Sonic boss fights and the boss fights of the Werehog as they are part of the entire experience, but they will be talked about separately, as will the Super Sonic final boss fights. The bosses in Sonic Colors are about as bare bones as you can get, and there's literally only three of them. Yes, there's technically six, but three of the boss fights are basically just repeat bosses from the previous three, with the difficulty cranked up. Which doesn't really mean much of anything, because all three boss fights are easier than doing first grade math when you're 27. The first boss type is this weird ferris wheel eyeball contraption, where you're pretty much homing attacking the eyeball and that's it. The second is this pirate boy, where you have to homie attack the pirate and then board his ship where you have to jump on his balls in order to blow up the ship. Real fucking nice. Last but certainly not least is the Advanced 2 inspired constant running boss fight, which I actually think fits a 3D Sonic game more than a 2D one if this is anything to go by. All three can be made EVEN EASIER by just using the wisp power offered up in the fight. Sonic Unleashed, on the other hand, does actually offer a bit more challenge in terms of the bosses. The Egg Lancer, Beetle, Devil Ray, and Cauldron all have pretty distinct fighting styles from one another, making each boss feel fresh and new. Hell, you don't even have to fight the Egg Cauldron as Sonic, fighting him instead in the Tornado, where you have to ride Son of Rome your way to victory. What I really enjoy about some of these bosses is the memorable moments you get while fighting them, such as running on the wall when fighting the Lancer, or the sheer amount of LASER that the Devil Ray produces. Being the celebratory game that it is, Sonic Generations adapts boss fights from past Sonic games and reconfigures them to work with the boost formula. No less than Quatre de Seis boss fights are modern Sonic ones, and pretty much all of them I like better than the original fights. Character fights in Sonic games are largely terrible, but the ones in Generations work masterfully because the boost formula allows for a more dynamic set of movement for both Sonic and the other character than what was previously available in past iterations of Sonic. While Perfect Chaos worked perfectly fine as a Super Sonic boss fight, pun totally intended by the way, I'm glad to see that this new version allows for more platforming elements to be included within the fight. Last but certainly not least is the Egg Dragoon boss, which is absolutely insane. It actually pretty much feels like what the boss fight would have been in Unleashed, except if it was modern Sonic instead of the Werehog. Oh, and it also has some grind sections, so that's cool. Generations and Unleashed also have an upper hand on colors not only in the variety offered in Sonic fights, but it also contains other bosses that don't involve modern Sonic at all. Classic Sonic has a couple of boss fights in Generations, and both are actually pretty easy in all honesty. I like the inventiveness that the fight against the Death Egg robot has, in the sense that you board onto his arm to attack him, but the simplicity of the fight pales in comparison to the original, or even to the boss fight offered in Sonic 4. Metal Sonic is also pretty weak in comparison to his CD boss. While the race against Metal Sonic in CD was a tad cumbersome, at the very least it was something, other than this very unimaginative run through a straight pathway. The Sonic Unleashed Werehog boss fights do actually fare a bit better. Each of them has an interesting sort of hazard that you need to exploit in order to defeat them, which can range from giving the boss a bit more character, such as throwing the water jars at the Dark Phoenix, 
to being a bit more of a challenge to execute, such as pushing the Sun and Moon blocks and the Dark Guardian boss. While the Egg Dragoon boss fight in Generations is pretty great, the Sonic Unleashed version is no slouch either, offering an all-out brawl with Eggman while falling down the elevator as the Werehog. I really enjoy how gravity takes a part in the fight, where Eggman will destroy the platform you were on in order to get you closer to the center of the Earth. Last but certainly not least is the Super Sonic boss fights, and here's where Colors actually has a fighting chance. See. The final boss in Sonic Colors doesn't actually make Sonic turn super, but what it does instead is take full advantage of the Wisp Power dynamic. Eggman uses what is ostensibly a negative version of the Wisp Powers that you use in the normal levels. For example, he uses his Cube Wisp in a way that impedes your path, and you have to try and dodge all of the cubes in rapid succession. While you don't turn into Super Sonic like in the other two boss fights, you still get to use this sort of maximum color power-up thing that blasts a SKITTLES beam right into his face. It's a pretty inventive boss fight that's short, sweet, and to the point. The Unleashed boss fight, on the other hand, is anything but. This fight actually comes in two phases, and one miniature phase. I honestly don't care for this phase where you're fighting as the Gaia Colossus, it's kind of slow, and I wish you could just punch Dark Gaia like you do in the Wii version, instead of the quick time events. The supersonic part is... alright, I guess? I do like the portion where you attack Dark Gaia's tentacles by smashing into them, but I really don't like the part that's basically just slow Doomsday Zone 3D edition. Now, a good thing about this boss, on the other hand, is the small sections where you play as regular Sonic. If you couldn't tell by my praise of PC, I love the bite-sized platforming challenges in boss battles, and I really want to see more of them in other Sonic games. I'm just going to spoil you all right now, Generations has the worst final boss out of the three. Not only is the boss itself kind of boring and underwhelming, but you have the constant voiceovers from the side characters annoying the shit out of you by telling you the most obvious advice anyone with a brain could deduce themselves. This boss fight has some of the worst conveyance I've ever seen as well. Besides collecting rings to stay alive, it took me a minute or two just to understand what exactly I was supposed to do, as when I was boosting towards Time Eater, that's his name by the way, he kept flying backwards for what feels like 50 feet. Gee, I wonder if the side character should have given me advice on how to fucking beat this guy, rather than telling me there's a homing shot every 5 seconds. It's a lot easier to pull off when the camera switches to 2D, but then you also realize that this boss offers literally no challenge whatsoever. I didn't die a single time to this guy, didn't even time over when I was trying to figure out what to do. Wow, this was a big category with a lot of qualification to measure. I honestly don't know, all of them have aspects of bosses that the other lacks. Honestly, just for how great the final boss is in colors, on top of the strengths of both Unleashed and Generations, I think I'm going to have to declare a draw on this one. Though if I had to choose based solely on the quantity of good bosses, Unleashed would probably be the victor here. That final boss really holds it back on this one. Ah, oh, thank god, a nice quick category to end off. Each of the boost trilogy has quite a bit of unlockables that you can score while you're playing the game. While I said before that I don't like how you're required to obtain the Sun and Moon medals and the Sonic stages, I'm perfectly fine with optional unlockables. Sonic Unleashed has three kinds of unlockables in the forms of tapes, art books, and music records. These give you some cool concept art, the OST for the game, and of course the cutscenes. There are also some side missions that you can do that are, I guess, kind of like secrets? Like the hot dog time trials? And those Sonic are pretty cool one well. soul unlockable in the form of red rings. Not only are the red rings optional, but they are vastly better placed and easier to collect than the unleashed medals. They also unlock levels in the SONIC SIMULATOR! <coughs> oh, Jesus fucking Christ. These levels are basically pseudo special stages. Co-op platforming levels that you and a friend can play. Yes, I said pseudo special stages, because you can unlock Super Sonic! By completing all of these stages. For the first time in a 3D Sonic game, you can play as Super Sonic in regular levels. It was pretty epic when this game first came out, but it has sort of decreased in hype over time. 
Generations is also pretty interesting in that not only does it have the red ring system from Sonic Colors, but it also has a whole slew of its own unlockables. These unlockables are not only obtained from the red rings, but you can also get collectibles from beating the levels, rivals, bosses, on top of the aforementioned red rings. God. Dium. Since Super Sonic is now unlocked by beating the game, all of the aforementioned levels now give you a whole bunch of other shit. Sonic at least had this experience system that increased both Sonic's abilities as well as a Werehog's abilities, but Generations eliminates that system and just gives you unlockable abilities. All of which are on this fucking list that I'm gonna put on the fucking video, so I don't bloat this script to high hell. Look at that list. It's a good list. You should pause the video if you want to check out what abilities are in this game. I'm not going to go through them. I will say though that my favorite ones are Endless Boost, because fucking breaking the game is hilarious, and the Electric Shield for Classic Sonic, which is really fun to use in his levels and gives you a lot of leverage. You can also unlock the movies in the OST like you can in Unleash, but instead of unlocking the OST of the game, you instead unlock different songs from throughout Sonic's history, which I think fits an anniversary game like this quite well. There's also the statue room where you can get statues of Sonic characters. I got the codes off of this website and that was fun. A little pointless, but fun. Okay, I know that originally Sega was going to give these codes out via events or something, but it's just funny looking back at how that basically never happened. Both Sonic Unleashed and Sonic Generations have DLC, but the DLC is way more of a bang for your buck in Unleashed than it is in Generations. Overall, I'm going to have to go with Generations on this one, for not only bringing the quality with fantastic additions, but the quantity as well. It might not have the DLC of Unleashed, but it more than makes up for it with the power-ups and the Casino Night DLC, which isn't half bad, honestly. I really like it, it's kind of this little pinball thing, uh, but I digress. If you wanted to count the PC version's mods, feel free, but considering that there's a mod that literally gives Generations the Unleashed levels, DLC included if you look hard enough, I think this point would have been a fucking slaughterhouse if I included it. Tallying up the scores, wow. Generations wins by a goddamn landslide. I mean, it was a 20th anniversary game and they did put all their heart into it. I think if I graded on more individual points, the other two would have fared better, but I wanted to consider these games as a collective whole of these parts, rather than keeping everything to its own category. If Colors has the best soundtrack and the only problem in the sound department is Sonic himself, I feel like it would have been a bit unfair to make voice acting a separate category for example. It also helped in Generations' favor that it has a PC version with modding potential and a really nostalgic gimmick that Forces is trying to crib off of. Now we can only sit here and wait for the new Sonsi to come out. Or I slacked off too hard and Forces is already out and you motherfuckers are playing it while I'm editing this fucking video! <laughs>